I bought this on air sign two years ago for the studio so that I could turn it on and let people know that we were on air. And when I bought it, I bought it for a couple of reasons. One, it had batteries. It's nice that you can just set it around. Two, it has this USB port here on the side. Now, what my thought was, was, okay, it's got a USB port, so I can plug in a USB cable to this and turn it on and off whenever I want by using um, an automated device. So, right now, this has batteries in it, and it works. If I take these batteries out, it's got three AA here in the back. I take these batteries out, and I plug up a USB-C cable to it, and then plug it into an outlet, and then turn it on. Nothing happens. And I know this works. I've tried multiple USB cables. I put in rechargeable batteries to see if this USB-C port recharges the batteries that are inside. Um, and that didn't work. I left them in there for like two days and came back and the batteries still weren't charged. Um, and then I put those batteries into a actual battery charger and they charged just fine. So it wasn't the batteries. I'm not sure why this USB-C port is here because it doesn't do anything. So I want to automate this light so that I can use automation to turn it on and off when I'm getting ready to produce a podcast or record a video so that I can hit a button and that way it lets everyone know that we're on the air I'll put it outside of the studio. So we're going to tear this thing apart. I bought a Schnitt power, um, power supply. It uses three AA batteries and from what I can tell it looks like it would be 4.5 volts because each one of these are 1.5 volts. Looks like it would be 4.5 volts of battery to power this but that's not always the case but it looks like that may be the way it works in this. Sometimes batteries are put in parallel or uh, daisy chain or whatever you want to call it to where um, it may double, it may be three volts and the other battery is for longevity, right? Or it may be 1.5 volts and it uses a total of three so that you never have to change <laughs> the batteries. But I think this one uses 4.5 volts for all three batteries combined. And I saw other people post that the batteries didn't last that long. I put these batteries in two years ago and used it quite a bit and they still haven't died. So, so I don't know what that's all about, but we are going to take this apart and then we're going to use a Govi outlet plug. And the reason why I use the Govi outlet plugs is because they actually have an API that you can do a lot of things with. Like I could build a website that when someone bought something, the on-air sign would come on or LED lights would light up or whatever, right? I could program that API to do all kinds of stuff. This also makes it really, really easy to incorporate into the Stream Deck. So the Stream Deck, you just put in your Govi API key and, and then connect this and it, it finds all of the devices and you tell it what device you want to turn on and off and you can set up a Stream Deck button really really easy so I'll show you creating that not creating the button but I'll create a button and, and show you guys in a little while so we're gonna use that but let's open this thing up we're gonna see what's inside we're hopefully gonna cut the cables and put this power supply together um, with this and this thing comes with a bunch of little adapters and we don't need that one we don't need any of these, we need this one right here. And what this does is it basically will allow you to put 
bare wires straight into the plug and then plug it in and then the light will work. So don't need those either. All right, so let's tear this thing open, see what we're gonna need to do with it and get started. All right, so we're gonna take this thing apart, cut my little um, Nest screwdriver. This came with my Nest thermostat whenever I bought my thermostat. So we're gonna take this little puppy apart. Try a different screwdriver. Let's see if this will work. Ah, yeah, there we go. So now let's pull this thing apart. All right. So we have some wires that go from the LEDs to this board, which has the USB-C port on it. Some that go to this switch. We don't need that switch anymore. These go to the battery, and then this loops the top LED and the bottom LED. So, looks like we do not need these wires here. So let's cut these wires. Okay, so now we got the top off. And if we're looking at it, it looks like these two wires here are the ones we need. So we're gonna cut these right down by the board there. Okay. Be careful with these. We don't want to pull them off of the solder from there. Okay. So now we need to strip these wires. We're going to go ahead and cut these. These go to the battery compartment and we don't need these. So we can actually cut these completely out. Let's just cut it there. Get those out of the way. So now we've got in this little piece here we could leave it or take it out I think we'll just leave just leave it in there for right now all right so now we need to cut these wires we need to trim these wires and this may not be small enough to strip these wires let's see what happens let's see if we can strip these wires get it in there Nope. Have to rely on the uh, old teeth. Hold on. All right. Got those two wires stripped. All right. Now we're going to use our little plug here. And this says right here on the top, it has a plus and a minus. I don't know if you can see that or not, but there's a plus and a minus there. So, the plus is where the red is going to go. So we're going to try to open this up just a little bit. Open both of these while we're here. Okay, we're gonna push the, twist this up a little bit. All right, we're gonna push the red wire into this side. All right, now I've got it wired in. 
let's go to open up our power supply. That's a little loud. And we're going to turn this all the way down to the back, the bottom that it'll go, which is three volts. So we're going to turn this to three volts just to make sure that we don't burn out these LED wires. This is as low as it'll go is three volts. So we're going to plug this in. And we're going to plug this into our power strip here to our extension cord. And we have LED lights working. All right. So now we get to put it all back together. Look at that. It works. So now we're going to put it all back together and try to figure out how we're going to put this. We'll just pop pop this little since we're not going to be using this let's pop this out all right so now we got this out so we're really just going to stick this in through there hopefully i don't ever have to take it apart And there is not much cable available. So we're going to do it just like that. It's not going to be the best, but hey, we can hold it, plug it in, unplug it, whatever. Not too worried about it. All right. And our on air piece goes back in. This is some. High quality craftsmanship right here. Baby. The USB C port back in there. Get this back in. Alright. So there it is. And let's get this put back together. Okay, let's plug it in, make sure it works. Boom on air look at that it works so we'll unplug it off air plug it in boom on air off air all right it doesn't look very bright on the camera but it's it's actually a little bright and we probably could go to 4.5 volts and plug it in Ooh, there you go now it's brighter so we'll leave it at 4.5 volts because that's what it took from the batteries so all right so now we have our light ready to go now i'm going to set up these this one of these goby plugs and this is what it looks like i'm going to set up one of these goby plugs and then i'll come back and i'll show you guys how it works okay so i went and configured the goby device with the Govi app and then also configured it with Stream Deck. So I'm gonna plug this in and show you guys how it works. So right here on the side of the Govi um, plug, there's a button so I can hit this and it turns the on air sign on and turns it off. So in Stream Deck, I created a button and then, okay, so then here on the iPad, I created two buttons and just did chat GPT. I said, I need a, on air button and an off air button for the stream deck and so it created and i told it i said i wanted a red background with white letters for on air and a gray background and white letters for off air so this is all of the a lot of the buttons that i can change cameras with and stuff like that when we're doing a podcast so now these buttons here i hit on air and now the on air sign comes on and then i hit off air and it turns off so now it's on air why did it not turn on there it goes sometimes govi takes a little bit because it is 
uh, an API and it goes out to the web and it does everything through the web. So it's a little bit slower than if you had um, maybe a Hughes plug or something like that or like a Hughes light. Um, but it does work that way and so now I can say off air and on air. So, and if you guys want me to show you how to set up Stream Deck and this is a the Stream Deck app for the iPad that connects to the Stream Deck on my computer. But with this we can run lights, we can change camera angles. I built a timer for so that the people uh, in the podcast can see how long they've been doing the podcast. So it starts and stops the timer. It starts and stops recording on all the devices, the A10 Mini Pro ISO, the Rodecaster Pro 2, um, and then it actually even records into OBS on the computer. So it does all that by one button, start to record. And so, um, and then we have different apps for different things on, on here, but it's, uh, but this is a, the main page that we do all the podcast production with and stuff. So that's it. That's how we're going to now use this light on, so we can say on air when we need to. So now I'm going to get it mounted on the wall and I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks.